Well, today... I have all 18 Jerry Anderson TV series lined up at the bottom here. And I have five different categories ranging from the best, FAB, all the way down to Spectrum is Red, the worst. Uh, and I am going to rank all 18 series uh, based on my preference. This is going to be just personal preference. I haven't really given this much thought. It, you know, where I place certain shows varies, honestly, on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. I have sort of ones that I hold in quite high regard and others not so much. Um, but I'm interested to just explore and categorize and do it in a fairly loosey-goosey kind of way. Uh, and I thought other people might be interested in hearing what I have to say about them. Because uh, it, it really is a, it's a very subjective thing. Uh, and not everyone's going to agree. Uh, I, I would like to think that my opinions reflect a good number of people. But there are probably going to be some odd curveballs in there. You might get some recommendations uh, for certain shows that maybe a lot of people haven't seen before. Uh, you also might find me uh, maybe not approving of things that a lot of people do approve of. So very interested to see how this kind of goes goes down. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's, there's not too much more to say. We've got every show in, currently in alphabetical order down the bottom here. Uh, what's not included is things like feature films, so Doppelganger, Crossroads to Crime, the two Thunderbirds movies, yeah, those are out. Um, then the pilots, things like The Investigator, which I love, of course. Um, the Investigator, Day After Tomorrow, Space Police is out. Um, the anime Firestorm series, because it was a Jerry Anderson idea, but not Jerry Anderson produced. Uh, that one does not count. Um, you've never seen this, purely because that's so early and i we barely seen any of it so and it's really quite far outside the 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 normal scope of things left that out and then anything else that's sort of not jerry anderson produced but sort of tangent tangential uh so thunderbirds 2086 is out uh thunderbirds i'll go the the 2015 series is out 2004 movie is out uh Roberta Lee's Space Patrol and Paul Star and all that stuff is is out as well. Just focusing on these eighteen TV series. Uh, so with all of that said and done, uh, I think it's time to get moving. Now, one thing I am going to try and do is I have I'm giving myself a rule of I have to have at least two shows in each category. Uh, so we've got 18, uh, so having at least two in every category should hopefully give us a fairly even spread, because obviously, you know, I like all Jerry Anderson shows, really. Uh, when it comes down to it, I will sit down and watch any of them, uh, and I, I actually really do mean that, um, but... There are just some I like more than others, and so just think, so just so you know, if you see something in Spectrum is red, it doesn't mean I absolutely hate it. Uh, it just means it's not as high as the others. And so, in order to get a fairly even spread, I'm going to put them, uh, you know, two, as I say, at least two in every category. Uh, and of course, I have the freedom to shuffle them around as I as I place them. Um, so here we go. Going to do it in alphabetical order. Uh, so we're going to start with the original Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. Uh, obviously, I say obviously, maybe it isn't obvious, but it goes towards the top end. That being said, of the Super Mario Nation shows, it probably doesn't get into the top half of those. Um, so I'm going to say as an initial placement, as an, in, just an initial placement, 
I'm going to put Captain Scarlet in Satisfactory, Most Satisfactory. I hope you get that reference. It's a supercar reference. Um, <laughs> yeah, Captain Scarlet, second from the top. I think that's... Currently, I think that's fair. I like... I love Captain Scarlet. Um, it's just... It's just not as uh, uh, awe-inspiring. I kind of came... You know, I, I, I was a big fan of it as a kid. Um, but maybe not as big as some of the other shows. Um, and it's not one I find myself coming back to re-watch as often as the other shows. Lots of people, by the way. My security hazard reviews on the security hazard blog, securityhazard.net, if you haven't seen them. Uh, you know, I've done episode reviews of Thunderbird, Stingray, and The Secret Service. And then I did, for the 50th anniversary of Captain Scarlet, I did reviews uh, of the top five episodes as voted for by fans. Uh, and people have, of course, requested uh, that I review the whole series that I do every episode. Uh, and it's not out of the question. I, I definitely uh, would like to do it at some point. It just hasn't quite, I haven't quite been drawn to it yet. Uh, and there might be other things that kind of come before it. So I think for that reason, that that slightly dictates why I'm not putting it you know, at the top. Anyway, I think I've said my piece on that. Dick Spanner. Dick Spanner, if you're not familiar, it's a little stop-motion animated show made in uh, the, the 80s, uh, based on an idea by uh, you know, Terry Adlam and Steve Begg, and I'm not necessarily sure how involved Jerry Anderson really was with it, but you know, it was made under his umbrella, so, you know, it, it counts. Uh, it's just a kind of interesting oddity because it's stop motion and because it's uh you know short episodes and it's very comedy focused so uh it's something a little bit different i love it i i think it's great uh it's really really funny um the low budget holds it back somewhat but also the low budget is part of the charm it is part of the charm of course I want to put everything towards the top. I think, for the moment, Dick Spanner's going in the middle. I think that's fair. I, th I think that's fair. To start with, as I say, this is all going to kind of get shuffled around later, I'm sure, uh, to make adjustments. But for now, that's where Dick, Dick Spanner's going, is in that position. If, if I'm thinking about it as, you know, we've got 18 shows to get through... If the middle is sort of ninth place, you know, ninth or tenth place, what, you know, how do I feel about having that there? And I think it just about works. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep moving along. Fireball XL5. Now, Fireball is my least favorite of the Super Mario Nation shows. I don't think that's too much of a surprise. Uh, it's certainly something I mentioned quite a lot when I was reviewing Stingray on the blog. Um, Fireball's the one I've kind of come back to the least. Um, I find some of the writing to be quite... It just doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> um, I think it... Honestly, I think it was kind of too ambitious... <laughs> for AP films to make at that time. Um, the fact that they went from Supercar, which is a small, you know, a, a, a small cast, you know, with one star vehicle, you know, minimal special effects, really, to then Fireball XL5, which was, we're going to explore the whole universe and we're going to have this giant city uh, called Space City and we're going to have all these different characters and robots and aliens and all this different stuff it was just really really ambitious and i think it, it helped them go on a path but overall i don't rate fireball too highly <sighs> am i gonna put it at the bottom 
should it go in Spectrum is Red based on that? What do I like about it? I mean, I like that it is ambitious. And I also like the innocence of it, you know, that it can just be like, we're going to the edge of space and, you know, not worry too much about the scientific consequences of, of that. So I, it's, it's hovering around the bottom. I think for argument's sake, I'm going to put it bottom for now, but it could move. Four Feather Falls. <laughs> Obviously, I love Four Feather Falls. Uh, I like really love it. I, I think that that just it, th through the process of putting that map together, I already enjoyed it, but I really, really love it. Um, I think it is uh, not just a great Super Mario Nation show, but a, a great bit of television. I think it's a wonderful tribute to the western genre which i really don't know that much about you know i i have accessed it through four feather falls i think it's really underappreciated um i think all the hallmarks of super marination are there pretty much from the word go the fact they went straight from torchy into four feather falls was stunning really um it yeah it's an easy watch but of course it does lack the scale and ambition and and everything else of the other shows i'm gonna put it second from the top next to captain scarlet and i know people won't agree with that <laughs> but i I love it. It's my... It's the one that I tell everyone to watch. Because it is so... It, it, it deserves the, the, the love. So, 4 and Force going up there. Joe 90. I love Joe 90 as a kid, honestly. Um, it actually probably captured my imagination more than Captain Scarlet. Um, and of course, you know... I contributed to the to the Project 90 technical manual uh, video on that with Chris Thompson. You, you can find that on this channel as well. Um, so, yeah, my I do love Joe 90. I get its shortcomings compared to other shows. I understand why it wasn't as successful. So I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it in A-OK. -okay. I think it's... I think... It suffers a little bit from... Being one of the later Super Mario Nation shows where... It was on a factory line process. Not maybe as much care and attention went into each individual episode. But I think the quality of the series as a whole... Puts it, puts it up there. Um... See now I'm now I want to put it there. I'm gonna put it there. Yeah, I'm putting it I'm putting it up with Scarlet and Four Feather Falls for now. I think I've talked myself into it because it is just the quality of it is so good. And there's a lot of episodes that I like and it it, it you know the, the, they're memorable and uh, yeah, really the characters are so beautifully written. Um so yeah, I'm gonna put Joe 90 up there for now. Lavender Castle. Oh boy. Here's an interesting one. I... The funny thing about Lavender Castle is it should have been my first Anderson show. It was the first new Anderson show that was released in my lifetime. Uh, just to make some of you out there feel really old. Um, but... But... I like it. I do like it. And I think the stop motion animation is beautiful. Rodney Matthews concept art. That whole art style is definitely something to be commended. Um, and it has a thing about it that feels 
like a Jerry Anderson show. Um, running time is a problem. It could be, yeah, it, it could benefit from slightly more advanced writing. I think I think it's a good candidate for Amber Alert. Looks beautiful. The CGI has not aged well. I will say that. I almost don't. I don't really understand why they use CG in the first place on that show. If if it had all been practical effects and models, it would have been stunning. I mean, it would have been expensive, but it would have been stunning. Um, but the CG that's in there right now, it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. I don't think the CG in the stop motion blends very well. Um, so that's where Lavender Castle's going for now uh, on Amber Alert. Talking of CGI, let's look at new Captain Scarlet. Um, now this one I do remember from first broadcast and I have a lot of nostalgia for it coming out. I was 10 years old. I was very excited. The new Captain Scarlet. Um, I loved all of the changes that were made. There really wasn't a single thing about it that I was that, that I rejected. You know, um, I know a lot of people obviously have problems with remakes and you know changing things from the original, but I think that everything that was changed was an improvement. So I think for that reason, I've got to at least put it, you know, on the same level as the original series. It's honestly difficult for me to separate them because they are simultaneously so similar, but also incredibly different, um, which sounds incredibly non-committal. Um, I am going, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put, put, put the two Scarlets next to each other. Um, now you'll notice that FAB has been... I haven't bumped anything up to the FAB level yet. And I'm wondering whether that needs to change. I think if anything's going to go up there though, it's Four Feather Falls. Yeah, I'm putting Four Feather Falls up on FAB. I'm putting that up at top tier. Because I think it is top tier. I think it is... The, the version, because it is the early version of Super Mario Nation, it, it almost has all of the qualities distilled into it. Um, the action and the suspense and the comedy and the, the advanced puppetry and everything, it's, it's there. Um, and I think it's there by design. A lot of people say, oh, well, the Four Feather Falls puppets are kind of crude. I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I think it's just stylistically designed to to look like that, um, and then they were kind of stuck with it as they kind of try to move into more realistic um, settings. So, yeah, I I think Four Feather Falls does what it does so so well. Uh, it doesn't overstretch. It doesn't try to 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 be something that it isn't. Uh, it knows its limitations and it just plays within those so so well. So yeah, Four Further Falls gets the top spot for me for now. <laughs> the Protectors. Sorry, Protectors, but it's a, it's an immediate spectrum is red. I can't possibly put it too near the top for 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 a couple of reasons. Number one. Uh, it's by far the show that I know the least about. I haven't watched that much of it. Um, I think I've watched the whole thing through once, maybe, and it's sort of all blended into each other. All the episodes are so similar, and it was produced to do that. Essentially, it was it was one of the few Anderson shows produced that that really was intended to be not at all groundbreaking. And that's what really stands out to me about it, is it, it doesn't push any boundaries. It's incredibly safe. Um, the fact it was shot on 16mm doesn't help. It has this look about it that that, that feels slightly... It's somehow they've made all the expensive location filming look 
slightly cheap. Um, I think it needs a reevaluation. Certainly, I'd like to go back over it again, um, purely for all the the guest stars and you know people that were involved with it. Um, but I think as a whole, I, I can't say that it represents Anderson shows on a, on the whole particularly well. And of course, it wasn't an Anderson concept. Not that it has much of a concept behind it anyway. This is kind of the other problem is it's it's so loose loose with the format that there there really isn't a lot to say about it. So yeah, Protectors is gonna be I'm pretty confident that that's gonna stay down at the bottom. Um but you know, someone's got someone's gotta go there. The Secret Service. Ha 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 ha. Now, obviously, I've reviewed The Secret Service in quite a lot of depth uh, relatively recently. And I appraised it sort of on the basis that it was slightly misunderstood, that the history of it isn't necessarily what we think it is, as in everyone looks at it as a complete failure uh, that was cancelled, Um Whereas I look at it as, well, it was kind of the death throes of Super Mario Nation anyway. Um, and it was commissioned for one 13 episode series and then it just was not renewed afterwards because the Andersons had moved on to other projects and, you know, lots of other reasons as well. Um, so uh, for that reason, I find it difficult to put sort of lower down which is what you might expect because i like the stories once the show finds itself to be honest once the andersons stop being involved with it it becomes much more of what it's supposed to be which is strange and charming and quirky and odd and funny um you know, comparing a case for the bishop to more haste, less speed, they're going for totally different approaches there. So it evolves over time and it becomes aware of, again, its limitations. Um, doesn't necessarily try to be anything more than what it is, but it takes a little while to get there. I think in the interest of... There. I think I'm going to put it there. I think I'm going to put it in a okay. I think having it on par with Dick Spanner feels uh, appropriate somehow. Um, just because they're both sort of more comedic series. Although The Secret Service has a lot of... Tries to do some serious stuff as well. It doesn't quite land uh, in the same way. So, Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Secret Service will go there. I'm tempted to put it into Amber Alert, but I think for now that that's okay. Let's see. Ah, Space 1999. Um, this is an interesting one. I was actually having a conversation with someone about this today. Um, I, I don't think I would like... I don't think I would have been attracted to Space 1999 if it wasn't an Anderson show. Be be to me, it, it... It doesn't feel like... I, I, you know, I grew up on Super Mario Nation, so the puppets are, you know, gonna, gonna win for me a lot of the time. But even then, I think... I think Space 1999, for me, um, I see its strengths. The production values are astonishing. It looks great. Um, some of the stories that it tells are really compelling. Some of the, the, the choices it makes, as, as far as the writing is concerned, uh, are, are bold. There's some really exceptional episodes. But... There is a lot of very average stuff in there as well. Incredibly average. I, I think I've mentioned before, but a lot of what I, I struggle with with Space 1999 is the fact that every episode is 
kind of the same. Um, <laughs> it, it does a lot of the same stuff. You know, discover an alien planet, plan to go and land on it, something goes wrong because the natives don't like <laughs> like the Alphans. They have a bit of a squabble, and in the end the moon, you know, moves on. And I think that the fact that that template is followed so often, and particularly in the second season, I mean, we're not even... I haven't... Normally, to be honest, I separate the second and the first season. I would definitely rate the first season higher. But I've lumped them together here, and because of that, I think it's got to go into Amber Alert. Just because, on the whole, it has a few standout moments, but it is otherwise very average to me, personally. I, I see its merits. I do see its merits. But it also just doesn't doesn't stand out to me what can i say it's it's all personal preference um next up space precinct this this one's tricky for me uh it's another one where i'm not as familiar with it um so i like it i really enjoy it actually when i sit down to watch it um <clears throat> i think it it finds its feet after a while I think I I think overall with what it does and the type of TV that I like I would say I prefer it over Space 1999 but I don't prefer it over Lavender Castle so I'm going to put it there um, that might change but I, li I like a lot of what Space Precinct does and, and tries to do um, but it is often uh, hampered by by some weak uh, scripting and some uh, you know production struggles. So there we go. That's where I'm putting Space Precinct for now. Stingray. I have to put Stingray at the top. I, that's not even a question. Stingray has to go in that top tier. Not necessarily the number one show that kind of varies <laughs> i picking picking a definitive number one show would be really difficult for me but for me stingray just ticks all the right boxes the perfect balance of drama and comedy it's uh the characters are superb the whole again having reviewed every episode on on the security as a blog the development of the series just takes it off in the right direction it builds upon what it what was going on with fireball and by the end point you can tell the ap films team are ready to do thunderbirds and it, it just kind of develops beautifully tells lots of different types of stories um yeah looks incredible um you know that obviously the fact it's in color is is a benefit but um i think even just the special effects they again found one type of thing that they wanted to do which was the underwater filming and they just perfected that and i really do mean like perfected it i don't know what else they could have done to make that underwater filming look better um yeah stunning stunning stuff yep yeah, stingray definitely definitely goes up there uh next up supercar love a bit of supercar um Possibly not as much as Four Feather Falls, actually. I haven't revisited Supercar in a while. Uh, that 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 would be one to to rewatch uh, for sure. But I mean, it definitely goes towards the top. I think some of the stories are similar, so you know, individual episodes don't necessarily stand out terribly well love the characters because they're so uh kind of uh i don't want to say edgy that's that's too strong of a word to use for supercar but they they've just got a little like i love that mike is kind of sarcastic uh and can be a bit prickly sometimes and i love that um you know mitch the monkey just causes absolute chaos and that dr beaker can be heroic but also cowardly and it, it you know just just 
everything about him is uh, really interesting. The characters have layers to them, uh, which I think comes through really in the fact that it's written by Martin and Hugh Woodhouse. Um, does it go top? Does it go top tier? I mean, a lot of the Super Mario Nation shows in particular owe a lot to Supercar. Supercar was really kind of where Four Feather Falls sort of found one thing to do and played it safe and played it very well supercar started to get more experimental and it didn't always land uh i mean literally the special effects didn't 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 always look as good as they could it was maybe a little too ambitious at times so i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it here next to Captain Scarlet I'm not sure which side of Captain Scarlet I will put it on but I will put it in that general area um yeah I think that's that's fair it, it isn't quite love 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 but it's it's pretty high up there Terra Hawks Terra Hawks Terra Hawks Terra Hawks love Terra Hawks definitely do not get the 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 any the the terror hawks naysayers because it's just so funny and uh again characters are uh really interesting characters really make that show i think if any, the, the the what i can understand about terror hawks as far as criticism is concerned is the, the the vehicles and the tech side of things is not as exciting or as dynamic as you know it was in the early super marination shows so i get that but i just think the types of stories it could tell that, that was a show where you could do anything you really could and it was funny and uh i think it worked well within its budget i think money seemed to be spent in the right places um so i mean yeah terror hawks definitely goes towards the top half for me <sighs> i'm gonna say it, it, it it's somewhere in this region with new captain scarlet and joe 90 somewhere in that region um as far as how much I enjoy it. Again, loved it as a kid. Uh, found it very... Uh, it, it is, I, I've said this on on uh, Twitter in the past. That Terror Hawks is to Thunderbirds what little cousin Scampy was to Sooty. And if you don't know that reference, then... My goodness, your, your, your poor childhood. <laughs> um, but yeah. And that kind of makes it lovable for that reason. It's a little bit naughty. Um, and I think that makes it good fun. Next up, well, it's Thunderbirds. And, well, it's got to go at the top. <laughs> Do I even have to say why? <laughs> Thunderbirds is the reason that I'm here. And Thunderbirds is the reason that all these other shows are here. Um, yeah. The, the, it is unique in television. There's nothing quite like it. I can't pin down the appeal of Thunderbirds. I have tried many, many times, but I cannot pin down exactly why it is as beloved as it is. There's... There's stuff wrong with it. It's not perfect. I, I do that was kind of when I wrote my reviews again. Securityhazard.net. Every episode of Thunderbirds reviewed on there. When I wrote those reviews, it was actually coming from a perspective of everyone says that something like Trapped in the Sky is perfect, and I kind of came in and said, actually, <laughs> the plot isn't perfect or special effects aren't perfect or continuity certainly is not perfect um so it's just interesting that you know people define it as as perfect but i wouldn't say it's perfect but what i would say is that there is absolutely something for everyone to love in there 
and uh, I, I don't think you can say fairer than that. Um, Stingray almost has the edge as far as consistency is concerned. I think Stingray is a more consistent product overall. Um, Thunderbirds has its really, really strong episodes, but when it's weak, it is, it is, well, it's still enjoyable when it's, when it's weak, but, um, it just kind of stands out more because of the 50 minute runtime, um, in a way. So, yeah, I'm not, I was going to try and avoid ranking within the categories, um, I will concede that Four Feather Falls out of those three is at the bottom. <laughs> I don't think I can doubt that. But Stingray and Thunderbirds are up there together for me. Always have been. Um, separating the two is incredibly difficult. So I'm going to leave them like that for now. Uh, now, <laughs> from Thunderbirds to Torchy. Ah, uh, Torchy the Battery Boy. Gets a lot of shtick, you know. Gets a lot of, uh... People don't like it. People think the puppet is creepy. Um... I have watched the show... Th I have watched that, that first series. The, the series that Jerry Anderson actually directed and, and made. I've watched it through once. Reasonably recently. And... You know... It... Obviously, for, for me, it suffers from Roberta Lee's writing style, which I just do not chime with whatsoever. I think her scripts are atrocious, re like really, really not good. Her, her dialogue is just so difficult to listen to. Um, just the way it talks down to children so badly. But the way it's made, you can tell that AP films are trying to push push you know what what they can do with this it could have been so bad <laughs> I, and I, I don't even know why I'm having this conversation obviously it's at the bottom obviously I put I even put it below the protectors just because I wouldn't sit down and I would rather sit down and watch an episode of the protectors than watch an episode of Torchy but what I will say is that uh Torchy has some redeeming qualities. I think that's as generous as I'm going to be on that. Twizzle. <sighs> Twizzle's obviously really difficult because there's only one surviving episode. <laughs> so I'm hardly going to put it at the top. Um, I mean, I am going to put it at the bottom. I'm going to put it yeah, right at the bottom. Purely because we have nothing to base it on. From what I've seen... From what I understand, it's very, very charming. Very much of its time. <sighs> I can't really say much more than that. It, 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 it obviously set AP Films on a path, and we have that to be to be grateful for. I would like to find a reason to put it higher, but obviously I can't, because I can't watch it. So, for that reason, Twizzle stays at the bottom. I think as an idea, it's fun. Uh, an arm, a, a toy that can extend its arms and legs that's you know ripe for some for, for some interesting storytelling it's better than torchy Tor all torchy can do can flash a light at people at least twizzle has extendable limbs i can actually see how that would be useful um anyway <laughs> i'm gonna put off talking more about twizzle and instead look at ufo <sighs> so ufo and Space 1999 always get kind of paired up, and deciding between which is best, I think people have their opinions on what that is. Generally speaking, I think I gravitate more towards UFO, um, but I think over time I've really spotted its strengths and weaknesses. I've actually, I wanted to do a, a review of UFO, I wanted to review every episode, and uh, I didn't go through with it in the end because it, it, it just, I just didn't have enough of a passion for it. Um, but if you go over to my uh, Kofi, 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 coffee, whatever you want to call it, uh, Kofi 
page, uh, you can actually read the the. Uh, if you go to my Kofi page and uh, pledge as little as a, a, a dollar, uh, you can you can read my uh, kind of. I think I rev I managed to review the first five minutes of the first episode of UFO, and that will give you a sense of kind of where I was going with it. Um, the the problem is UFO takes a while to find its feet. In fact, finding its it, it probably takes longer than any other show to find its feet, just because the cast keeps changing, um, and that makes it really difficult to build up relationships between characters or to to get any sense of fondness for 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 any one in particular. Um, as soon as you think a particular character arc is going to start up and develop over the course of the show, that actor is gone next week. And I think that's a real problem. Uh, it really kind of holds the show back. I think it has so much potential. I think... Um, I think the fact that it is talked about a lot as far as we should remake this... I think it is actually the Jerry Anderson show that is the most ready to be remade. Um, just because it, it hasn't necessarily aged that well uh, compared to the others. It's not as timeless as some of the other shows. And I just think in a modern setting you could do some really interesting stuff with it. Um, because I like its bleakness. And I like its... Um, uh, I, li I like how big the organization of Shadow is. I like how far-reaching it is. I like that you can tell different... I, I like the fact... I think what's to be admired about UFO is the fact that they managed to find different types of stories to tell with a format that essentially lends itself towards oh, Alien comes down to Earth, shoot at it, end of episode... They do more with it than that. So I think that's got to be commended. And I think towards the end of the series, they really start to get creative with that format. And they actually do start to de develop the aliens and develop some core characters. Um, overall, I I want to put it in A-OK. -okay, and not just because it kind of balances all of that out quite nicely. But because I think definitely the Andersons were learning how to make live action TV they had all this budget to work with weren't quite sure what to do with it and I think basically UFO they threw a lot of stuff at the wall <laughs> and some of it stuck and it was good um, but there's a lot of stuff that also fell by the wayside so I think it kind of has to go in the middle because there's a lot of really good stuff and a lot of not so great stuff um now that's that's everything that is every show gone through the question is do i have any changes to make i've got two at least two in every group so i've, I've kind of fulfilled that obligation it's actually quite well balanced really i feel bad keeping fireball down there with the protectors and torching and twizzle i think there needs to be some separation between those and i would actually probably put fireball actually all the way to the top of amber alert as well just because uh, it's the most kind of cohesive uh kind of well put together product uh overall in that group i think you can sort of the problem I have with things like Space Precinct is that it wears its production problems quite visibly. Like, lots of Jerry Anderson shows were pushing, you know, technological kind of boundaries, but not all of them managed to do it comfortably. Um, and I think some of the stuff that suffers because of it is going to be more towards the bottom of that list just because it's slightly uncom not uncomfortable to watch but but you know it, it lacks the 
confidence that something like Stingray or Thunderbirds has, where it's like, we know what we're doing with these puppets now. <laughs> and honestly, the reason I admire Four Feather Fall so much is because I, it, it, it also has that confidence. So, at the top, in the FAB column, or row, I should say, Stingray, Thunderbirds, Four Feather Falls. Satisfactory, most satisfactory. I just want to review this group one more time. Supercar, Captain Scarlet, New Captain Scarlet, Terror Hawks, Joe 90. Uh, I think I'm going to have Captain Scarlet at the top of that group, followed by... Oh, uh, followed by Joe 90. Followed by Supercar. No, followed by New Captain Scarlet. Followed by Terror Hawks. Followed by Supercar. I think that's a fair ranking to start with, anyway. Um, then we've got the Secret Service, Dick Spanner, and UFO. I think that's all reasonably fine. I would maybe put Dick Spanner there. Um, Secret Service at the top. UFO. Excuse, sorry if you can hear the dog barking in the background. Hopefully <laughs> that stops. Sounds like she's settled. Um, Secret Service, UFO, Dick Spanner. Yeah, I'm okay with that. People might think it's odd to have Dick Spanner so high up, but I really do enjoy it. Um... It's really excellent. There's there's kind of so much potential in in that in that concept. Such a kind of freeing kind of idea to just have a wisecracking robot uh, detective going around and doing sort of film noir style stuff mixed with sci-fi, mixed with fantasy. It's it's all very uh, very uh as i say free to kind of do whatever and uh it's it's good fun it, it's a nice reflection of i think that cruise kind of that you know the terror hawks cruise kind of sense of humor i think is really well reflected in dick spanner so i would definitely keep it like that um amber alert fiber xl5 lambda castle space precinct space 1999 i think i'd probably put space 1999 above space precinct thinking about it i'm like i would rather sit down if i think about what i would rather sit down and watch an episode of i put space 1999 above space precinct um just because space 1999 as i mentioned has a few really strong episodes in there but it just isn't quite up there for me i think that's going to be the one that i get i get the most uh kind of trouble for <laughs> is, is putting it there because I get it. It's it's it looks it looks pretty, but a show needs to do more than look pretty. Um, and I'm sure lots of people will tell me all the amazing things uh, that there are to find. Let's just zoom in on this list slightly so that we can get a better look at it. Um, there we go. That's better. Now you can see it more clearly. Um, so yeah, Space 1999, Space Precinct, and then at the bottom, The Protectors, which just, it, it's simple, doesn't feel like an Anderson show. It's not surprising, looking at this, <laughs> what I now realise what I've done here, uh, is all these shows at the bottom, the formats were not devised by Jerry Anderson. The Protectors was kind of given to Anderson by Lou Grade. Uh, and Torchy and Twizzle were Roberta Lee. So maybe it's not all that surprising that those are the ones at the bottom. Um, but I don't really have a problem with those being at the bottom. Um, and I think there needs to be a separation between these two tiers. So I think that's all fair. <sighs> okay, well, come on YouTube, comments. Have a go at me. You know, tell me what I did right, what I did wrong. Uh, you know, do you agree with that listing? I, I can definitely see the parts that people wouldn't agree with. But I hope you can see that the general overall outline. Yeah, I hope I've justified why I personally would put it all 
uh, like that. So thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. Uh, and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.